So, the next part of the discussion here is that is composition of atoms, composition of atoms and formation of ions, composition of atoms and formation of ions. If you go for atom, you know very well that you know pretty well that always atom is spherical, spherical in shape and uh, the central region, the central region of the atom uh, is made up of positively charged region called the nucleus. The central region of the atom is occupied by the positively charged nucleus, positively charged nucleus. Positively charged nucleus and this nucleus is made up of this nucleus is made up of nucleons. This nucleus is made up of nucleons and these nucleons are actually equal to sum of protons plus neutrons. Sum of protons plus neutrons. Outside the nucleus, the extra nuclear region is made up of shells and the shells contains electrons. So, outside the nucleus extra nuclear region extra nuclear region is occupied by that is shells shells are made up of shells or orbits and these orbits are filled with the electrons orbits are filled with electrons. So, suppose if I am going to draw one small diagram, I can say that this is the positively charged nucleus and it contains protons and neutrons, nucleus with protons and neutrons and outside we have the shells like this. These are the shells and in the shells we have electrons. So, that means what we are able to understand is if you take any atom, any atom if you take number of always in a given atom number of usually number of electrons E for electrons number of electrons is equal to number of protons usually that is as long as the atom is electrically neutral this condition is satisfied when the atom is electrically neutral. atom is electrically neutral, but when the same atom if it is not electrically neutral then the number of electrons is not equal to number of protons. So, in this scenario what we have to understand here is that means after understanding the composition of atoms then suppose if, in a, if a situation arises where you take an element x you take x is an element if x is an element then suppose it is losing say it is giving one electron it is giving away one electron when it is giving away the electron the lost electron or the given away electron is shown on the product side and on the product side you find that after the element x if it is going to lose one electron then it has to acquire one unit of positive charge. Suppose I am taking here I am taking take one example for this generalization take one example you take sodium it contains sodium contains total 11 electrons that is 2 electrons in the first orbit. 8 electrons in the second orbit and 1 electron in the valency shell, 1 electron in the valency shell sodium. So, this sodium now it is going to lose 1 electron. If it is going to lose 1 electron right now here if you take this sodium after losing this sodium will acquire 1 unit of positive charge that means now it contains 2 electrons in the first orbit and 8 electrons in the second orbit. You are finding that the number of electrons have come down to 1 unit less here the total number of electrons total number of electrons are 11 electrons, but here the total number of electrons after loss of 1 electron the total number of electrons only 10. But interestingly what we have to understand here is in, in sodium it is neutral if the sodium is neutral then here it contains 11 protons it contains 11 protons and here it contains yes this Na plus ion it contains still it contains 11 protons, but because sodium is carrying 1 unit of positive charge this sodium which is carrying 1 unit of positive charge 
we call this sodium as that is cation. It's a sodium cation. Uh, that means atom when it is going to lose an electron, atom when it is going to lose an electron, and if it is going to acquire one unit of positive charge, then that positively charged species we call it as the cationic species. This is element which is neutral, and now because it is carrying positive charge, it has become cation. Likewise, you can take as many number of examples as possible to understand the mechanism of cation. Suppose one more example I would like to give you. This is first example. Go for second example. You take uh, that is uh, you take magnesium. Magnesium loses two electrons because it contains two electrons, eight electrons, and again two electrons. Two electrons are the valence electrons. So magnesium it is going to lose altogether two electrons, and it is going to acquire two units of positive charge. So here this has become magnesium cation. Magnesium cation. So here the magnesium is neutral. So here how many electrons are there? Means there are there are twelve electrons, and also there are twelve protons. Twelve protons are there. Twelve electrons and twelve protons. Here we have that means after after acquiring two units of positive charge, you have to remove two electrons. Already two electrons are lost, so now it contains ten electrons and twelve protons. That means once the cation is formed, you find that the number of electrons are not equal to number of proton. That is what you have to keep it in your mind. Likewise, you can take you can take number of examples like you can take aluminium also. If you take aluminium, aluminium by losing three electrons, it acquires it loses three electrons. And it acquires three units of positive charge. So here, electron distribution: two electrons, eight electrons, and again three electrons. These three electrons are the valency electrons of aluminium. So this aluminium is going to lose these three electrons, and now it is going to acquire two electrons in the first shell, and eight electrons in the second shell. And so therefore, here total number of electrons are ten, and here total number of electrons are thirteen electrons. We have thirteen electrons, and here we have. 10 electrons so that means from this it is very clear that number of electrons are not equal to number of protons here 13 electrons and we have 13 protons and here 10 electrons and 13 protons are there so number of electrons are not equal to number of protons once the cation is formed so the next part of the discussion that is formation of go for formation of anions to go for formation of anions you take an element x fixes the element it gains one electron and it acquires one unit of negative charge that means that means this also means that this is an anion or you can directly write it as or you take x as an element it gains n number of electrons and it forms it acquires in number of negative charges so these are uh, the species is anionic species so what you are noticing here is you, you can take the value of n as 1 2 3 4 and so on if it if it is one it is monovalent monovalent then the then the anion formed is monovalent if it is two bivalent if it is three then it is trivalent something like that suppose i would like to give you some excellent examples for this you take chlorine chlorine it contains two electrons eight electrons and seven electrons seven electrons in the valency shell so this chlorine it gains one electron separately and uh, it acquires one unit of negative charge so right now it contains two electrons eight electrons and again eight electrons so here total number of electrons present are 17 electrons and here the total number of electrons present are 18 electrons but however here we have 17 protons and here also we have 17 protons but only thing is that the only difference what you are noticing is it contains when the when the element or the atom is in the neutral state it, it contains equal number of electrons and protons but when the species which is formed the anionic species which is formed after gaining one electron it contains more number of electrons and less number of protons you find 18 electrons and 17 protons this is example 1 So you can take as many number of examples as possible. Suppose if I am taking the simplest example of forming an anion, you take uh, that is uh, oxygen. You take you take oxygen. O is oxygen, so it contains two electrons and uh, six electrons in the valence shell. It gains two electrons. If it is gaining two electrons, it forms 
O2 minus. If it is forming O2 minus, it contains 2 electrons and 8 electrons. Here, total number of electrons are 8 electrons, and here, total number of electrons are 10 electrons. And here, we have 8 protons, and here, we have 8 protons. The only difference is you have 10 electrons and 8 protons after the formation of oxide ion. And initially, when the oxygen is in the neutral state, it contains 8 electrons and 8 protons. Here, this O2 minus, this O2 minus, we call this as O2 minus as oxide ion, oxide ion or oxide anion. Here, Cl minus is chloride, chloride ion. This is chlorine atom in the neutral state. Go for example 3. In the example 3, take nitrogen and uh, it contains 2 electrons and uh, 5 electrons initially. So, it can gain 3 electrons. When it is gaining 3 electrons, then it acquires 3 units of negative charge and here it contains total 7 electrons and uh, 7 protons. Number of electrons is equal to number of protons, but after gaining electrons, it is going to acquire 2 electrons and uh, 8 electrons. So, total it is going to get 10 electrons, 10 and we have 7 protons. So, 10 electrons and 7 protons. So, number of electrons are not equal to number of protons and this anion form we call it as nitride ion. In this way, we can say that the formation of cations always, always acquires positive charge and the formation of anions always acquires negative charge. So, we can also generalize that uh, all the species which are carrying positive charges are called cations. Cations are the species which carry positive charge and the anions are the species which carry negative charge. Cations are formed from the neutral element by loss of electrons and anions are formed from the neutral element by gain of electrons. So, gain of electron leads to formation of anions and loss of electrons leads to the formation of cations from their respective neutral element. So, here the next part of the discussion is formation of formation of simple ions simple ions to compound ions formation of simple ions to compound ions for example when we say simple ions when we say simple ions Simple ions are actually they are formed, we can say that they are formed from simple atoms or elements, simple atoms or elements. Example, if you take sodium loses one electron, it forms sodium cation, magnesium loses two electrons and it forms magnesium cation. Likewise, we take aluminum, it loses 3 electrons and it forms aluminum trivalent cation. Silver Ag, it loses 1 electron and it forms bivalent cation. So, like this you can take number of examples, these are all cations, all these are cationic species. So, all this comes under the, these are all cations. I can say that these are simple cations. Now, what if I am taking, suppose I am taking NH4 plus, NH4 plus I am taking, then you can take H3O plus, hydronium ion, then you can take NO2 plus, NO2 plus, sometimes you can even take Cl plus like this. Of course, Cl plus is again simple cation. Actually, NH4 plus is a compound cation. We can call this as compound. All these are compound cations. How these compound cations are formed? For example, for example, if you take ammonium chloride, ammonium chloride is a salt. This ammonium chloride, it breaks the lattice and it forms 1 plus and 1 minus. So, you get 1 ammonium cation and 1 Cl minus. So, this we call it as compound ion. 
cationic compound ion cationic compound ion for example you take h2o it contains two lone pairs it adds up one proton and it forms h3o plus this is cationic compound ion cationic compound ion similarly you go for no2 plus no2 plus if we call this as that is compound nitronium we call this as nitronium cation so like this i can add few few more so all this comes under the cations now if i go for anions if i am going for anions cl minus cl minus is an anion then so4 cl minus we can take h minus we can take then o2 minus n3 minus all these are simple anions but if you go for compound anions so4 2 minus so4 2 minus cro4 2 minus c2o4 2 minus then uh, we can take uh, no3 minus cn minus all these we can call them as we can call them as compound anions compound anions always we get anions from the sim simple neutral molecules compound anions can be obtained from acids they can be obtained directly from acids they can be obtained from the salts there are only two chances for the compound anions to be formed either they have to be formed from the salts or they have to be solved from the they have to be prepared or uh, formed from the ionization of the salt or they can be prepared from the acids for example if you take sulfate h if you take sulfate h, h, so4 2 minus is sulfate so h2so4 upon dissociation it gives one sulfate anion and release of two protons cro4 2 minus h2cro4 chromic acid it dissociates to give two h plus ions that is CRO4 2 minus ions, 2 minus and 2 H plus ions, chromate ions, like that. So here the discussion is that is, is you prepare two tables in such a way that you are preparing the cationic ions and the anionic ions. All the cationic ions are the ions which carry positive charge, and and the anionic ions. are those ions which carry negative charge so just let us try to write their respective names for example nh4 plus is ammonium 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 cation name of cation i'll write here ammonium cation this is cupric if it is u plus it is cuprous similarly you go for fe3 it is ferric if it is fe2 plus it is ferrous similarly hg2 plus mercurous mercurous ion this is that is potassium 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 cation potassium cation we can simply call it as potassium cation similarly go for name of anion name of anion we take so this is hydroxy hydroxy anion this is nitrate anion oxide ion oxide anion carbonate anion phosphate anion phosphate anion then uh, you can go for oxalate anion and the last one is that is dichromate anion so like this you can give different names for the cationic species as well as the anionic species in this you are finding simple anions and compound anions in this also you are finding that there are simple cations and compound anions and their respective charges